Welcome to the Frankie and Rochelle, Show, everyone. I am your host, Rochelle. We'd like to thank you all for joining us tonight. Now, here I am gathered in the CMAC television studios with a great panel of women joining me today. Sitting right here by my side, I have Miss Dominique Pesca Howell. She is the author of Overcoming Obstacles While Rising to the Top. I always forget the, the beginning of the book, but she has a great book out right now. Sitting next to her is the First Lady of Harvest of Harmony International Church, Pastor Ginger Morgan. And of course, the sweet Miss Joy <laughs> down there on the end. She's joining us, Joy Ramirez. We'd like to thank you all for joining us tonight. Now, we have some very interesting topics today that we're going to discuss. Um, a lot of these topics are um, topics that are going on around the world, not just here in our own city, but global. Um, and we'd like to discuss them and give you guys our opinions and hopefully what we're sharing today will help you and uh, you can take that and apply it to your daily lives. Um, one of the first topics I want to discuss is um, a major topic out there in the world today, which is suicide. Mm -hmm. um, it's hitting today's youth at a, a, a very fast rate. Mm -hmm. Now, not only have I experienced um, suicide in my own personal family, but I'm sure a lot of us know someone mm -hmm. that has mm -hmm. done suicide or, or have either tried to do it. Um, and the reason why I wanted to do this topic is, is because it hits home. And I want to see if there is a way that we can offer advice to the youth that may be watching, and not just the youth, but to an overstressed mom who's thinking about it, or to a, a, a dad who's working so hard that he can't catch up, who may be contemplating this um, issue. And I want to see if there's something that we can offer to them that might make them feel a little bit better about who they are and um, what they can potentially be. I want to start with, um, <laughs> you told me not to start with you, but okay, I'll skip you and I'll, I'll go to Joy since Joy's down there on the end today. I'm, I want to <laughs> start with Joy and, um, and talk to you about this topic and why do you think so many youth are taking their own lives? I think with suicide, I think that there's a time I, I think that we're, the youth feel that there's no one that they can go to to talk about. Mm -hmm. I think um, we mentioned bullying. We've had the discussion about bullying and anything and that topic and then our last panel. And I think that kind of goes with that and, you know, with the suicide. Um, a lot of people feel, a lot of the youth, I feel, think that either they don't have an adult, maybe they don't have a parent, maybe the parent's too busy at work, or maybe they just don't even know how to approach the, 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 the issue. They don't know what to do at this point. Um, I know I've gone through experiences where I've kind of felt, well, is this what I have to do? Um, but then I think about it. I, re I reevaluated situations and I've kind of thought, no, there's a reason why God put me here. There's a reason why I'm still here. There's a reason why I'm going through these obstacles in life, why I'm dealing with the heartbreak or family issue or anything like that. Um, but with youth nowadays, I just feel like they, they don't know what to do. They don't know who to turn to. Um, I know the, um, the, I always think about the, the little wristbands that they have. I don't know if you've ever seen them with the, um, they're the gay pride colors. Mm -hmm. And it's to where if an adult is wearing it, whether they're gay or not, um, you can confide in them if you have an issue or if you feel that you're being bullied, you can go to them. And that always, every time I see that wristband, I think of that because it was a movement I think they started a couple years ago. And I thought that was a wonderful movement that they started because it was due to a, um, a, a young a youth that he was gay and he um, he had no one to turn to and he turned to suicide mm -hmm. and it was the main reason was because he had no one to talk to he felt like he couldn't confide in anyone in his issues um, I just feel like sometimes as adults we get too caught up in our lives and we don't we don't pay attention to our youth yeah um, I think that's that's what we have to pay attention to the signs of a kid if we see a kid is sad or we feel that the kid is keeping a lot to themselves ask him how's your day how are you what's going on um, it's you know, you might have to dig at them and dig at them, but I feel like that's one of the reasons why our youth turn to suicide because right. they feel like they have no one to confide in. Now, uh, Pastor Ginger, talking about people confiding in you, you're a pastor um, at a church, and I know you have a lot of members, not just adults, but youth as well, who come to you and confide in you and talk mm -hmm. to you about things that are going on. Mm -hmm. And youth is, um, I'm sure, a lot of, of people that come to you are the youth. How do you deal with the youth that come to you and confide in you, and maybe this is a topic that they bring up. How do you deal with that? Well, you know, first of all, um, we have to have something called a safe house where a youth can come and knowing that what I tell you 
that you won't judge me. Mm -hmm. And um, not only you won't judge me, but um, you won't look at me as if I'm not human of what I'm going through, what I'm feeling. See, Rochelle, I've been in the prison system for about three years, and I've been dealing with, um, called JLC, it's called Juvenile Youth Offenders, and they have been um, in prison um, at a young age because they've been molested, they've been raped, um, or their parents been on dope, don't know their mother, been in the foster care system. And so they asked me to be a part of this program, and it was only supposed to be a year. So um, I got insight of how um, they end up where they're at. And how they end up where they're at is because someone else comes around to help them, which is the wrong influence. Mm -hmm. This is why we have to have safe house where the kids can come to you and say, this is what I'm going through. I have a young lady, and you might want to have her on, her pro on your program, that she... Um, she it's been two years that she's been out of prison, which she had um, just been hanging out with the wrong guy, and he goes into a jewelry store and he shoots the, um, you know, shoots the the owner of the jewelry store, and tells her to grab all the stuff. Well, at that time she was 14 years old, didn't know what she was doing, but this guy was like six years older than her. But she didn't have anyone to confide in. She didn't have anyone to talk to. So she wind up doing life in prison, and she did actually. 15 years and since you know only in California they are sending people young youth to um, life in prison only in California mm -hmm. but it's illegal to do that so what they're doing they're revisiting these cases and it's really a lot of our African Americans as well as our um, Hispanic community that are in the prison system mm -hmm. that's because they have no money to fight for them and they're not really looking at the cases if you were a trouble kid and a lot of these kids are trouble kids why because they've been molested by stepfather they have been sold for dope um, you know so they they they're out out there by themselves so when they get in trouble and they see the judge constantly mm -hmm. seeing the judge the judges said you're a problem I'm putting you in in jail and they really don't even visit you know really the situation because they don't need to be in prison they need help right. and so um, back to your question is that these kids need a place and all that I, I mean I get kids to tell me the saddest stuff that happens in their house, you know, and even though I'm a mandate reporter, I have to pray and say, Lord, how do I address this when you're living in a home and the father, stepfather is molesting you? Mm -hmm. And so that's where they have so much anger. They're so depressed. In some cases, Rochelle, the mother knows. Mm -hmm. She knows what's going on, but they do not defend the children. So I agree with you. They're looking for an adult that they can confide in, and they usually don't want that person to judge them. Mm -hmm. And so, when you get this information, you have to come up with a solution. Right. And on the no, um, I believe it's on the 19th of. Um, of November, mm -hmm. we're going to have Terrence Richmond, and Terrence Richmond has this. He's um, he's trying to bring in to different communities and different cities. It's called the Village. Mm -hmm. It takes a village to raise a children. So he's came up with this concept to get the community to go back and the leadership to go back, the police department, the fire department, everybody to go back and say, listen, we have to help our kids. Mm -hmm. We're It's not the jail system, juvenile mm -hmm. system is not going to help them. You know, drugs, these kids are depressed. They have mental illness. They never have been able to be evaluated. And so we need to take these children and we need to, it has to go back on the community yeah. because we pass, our, we pass by things that we see. We'll see some kid hitting a girl and we won't say anything. Mm -hmm. But I, I I have a little story to tell, just a real quick one. Mm -hmm. I was like, I think I was like um, 13 years old and I'm just on my way home and just the village concept. I'm on my way home and, and I see a friend of mine that I go to school with and he was a boy so I'm stopping and he's talking to me and we just happen to be on the corner. Mm -hmm. And so he's talking to me and I'm talking to him and so my neighbor passes by and she stops and she gets out the car and she says, get in the car. It's not ladylike for you to be standing on the corner talking to a boy. And she pulls me inside the car and then she takes me to my father and she says, she's on the corner. But that's what it used to be. We used to be able to talk to somebody else's kids and says, no, you know you shouldn't be doing that. And we respected our elders. We need to get back to that where we're not shutting our eyes, closing
exposing our because we look at what they're wearing, the color of their skin, you know, how, you know, what family they came from, how mm -hmm. much trouble they get into. I invite trouble kids in mm -hmm. because I know I have a solution for them. Right. And so, you know, so we got to get back to making a safe place for our children. Right. Now, there's more to come. I'm going to get to Dominique as soon as we take a quick break, but we're going to continue with this subject. And we're also going to get into, uh, like Pastor Ginger said, bringing back the basics. Mm -hmm. We have to get back to that. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk more about that as soon as we come back from a really quick break. So we want you guys to stick around.